Hey guys, George at Soundtracks, and this week we're gonna talk briefly about speed matching, what it is and the history behind it, and how you can do it with Tsunami 2. So let's get started. Now first off, we're gonna talk briefly about what is speed matching. Now back in the early days of DCC, we had decoders that were not back EMF equipped. Now back EMF stands for back electromotive force and it's determining and watching the rotations of the motor to make sure that the motor's turning at speed step one. Now before this was a standard feature in many decoders, we had to go through and dial it in ourselves. And that's where CV2, which is called V-Start, comes into play. Now with a lot of these early motor decoders, sometimes it would be speed step seven, sometimes it would be speed step 10, sometimes I've even seen speed step 15 before the locomotive would start to move. Now enter back EMF and now it's watching to make sure that that motor's turning at speed step one so that you don't have to spend hours of time adjusting CV2 till it just barely starts and then having to build the speed table after the fact. Now, for example, we're gonna kind of show you, now these are four Tsunami 2 equipped locomotives of three different manufacturers. I have an Athern, a Walther's Proto, another Athern, and an Atlas model. Now, we're gonna go ahead and show you with these locomotives advanced consisted here set to address 20, we're gonna move them at speed step one and see how they do with the default values. Now, looking really closely, these three locomotives here are actually running pretty close together. You can see that that gap maintained is pretty close. This one might be a little bit tad slow. This one here looks to be a little fast. So this is where we can actually compare it and decide how do we want to adjust this. So we can take this locomotive, we're gonna move it over here. Now we're gonna remute these guys. Now let's go ahead and start moving these guys forward. Again, at speed step one, we're gonna go ahead and move them back a little bit. Let's see how they run together. Now see, these guys are really close and these are really close. And that's pretty much staying right in line. So let's go to speed step two now. And you can kind of see how they're running really, really close together. Now this is why back EMF exists. So that way your models will run pretty close out of the package. Now if you want to get meticulous and worry about the couplers perfectly touching or whatever through the entire speed range, now you can do that with the Tsunami 2 going through and setting the entire speed range, or you can make minor adjustments in CV5 and 6. CV2, which we talked about as V-Start, with the back EMF, you can see no longer needs to be done. When it comes to the real locomotives running in real life, those locomotives buck and bounce back and forth between those couplers all the time. I've heard from real railroad engineers that a lot of these different types of locomotives load up their traction motors differently. Sometimes they take uh, power right away, sometimes they take a little longer to get that power applied. And so what ends up happening is you see a lot more of the bucking. The problem is, is that from our perspective, when we're standing trackside watching that train go by, that is so fast that we don't even have time to focus on the coupler, let alone barely sometimes the locomotive. So when we're taking these two locomotives here and we've coupled them up, there's only this short little bit of time of space between. Now granted, when you're making your speed matching and you're wanting to make them run, you don't want them to sit there and do this, but the real locomotives will occasionally bump and bang their couplers while they're running at speed. So as long as you get them close and they run well, you're gonna have a great experience because again, once you put a train behind them, they're all gonna be working together to pull that train. Now these are all set to factory default speed settings, uh, tables and so forth. So that way you can see these out of the package, how they run together with three different manufacturers worth of stuff. Now for more information on how to set the speed tables or to make the adjustments in your models, please go to our website at soundtracks.com and go to the reference tab and search for manuals where you can find the user's guide that will walk you through all of the motor control CVs that you can adjust in your models to really fine tune the operation for your tastes.